All right, that's the campaign song of uh, Dr. Joyce Laboso during the election of 2017. Gladys Boschele mm. is disappointed that we faded it down, but uh, we're just wondering <laughs> what does it mean? You said that's one of her favorite songs? That was uh, one of her campaign songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a song by Ben B that talks about Kiwale, mm -hmm. because we shall change. Mm. Because I think the slogan of, uh, of uh, Isaac Ruta was that we shall not change Isaac. Magiwale Kiplogo, you know his <laughs> traditional name is Kiplogo. <laughs> then he's, then so her people responded and said, we shall change it. Uh -huh. And so that's why you find when they sing, they say Kiwale. Uh -huh. And uh, there used to be another slogan where they say, choice, my choice. All right. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, and I think if those, for those who visited, but Matt, I, I think in one of those that you showed, I was in those cam that campaign trail. Mm -hmm. But I remember it was electric. Mm -hmm. It was so personal that we were willing to give up our own seats, right. but get that seat of governor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, the feeling was so strong. So women came from all over. Everyone came to support Joyce because she, she, we thought, and I remember that when I spoke, I said, I told, I said, please vote for her. I mean, we, we, ju we so desperately, we, have, we need a woman governor right. in this part of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. And even as uh, we pay tribute to her and remember the wonderful things about her, I think I, 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 I can imagine, <laughs> and my heart goes out, and my deepest condolences to her children, right. her family, mm -hmm. and uh, the people of uh, Bomet. Mm -hmm. But I must encourage them by saying that what Joyce has accomplished. People even who are given a hundred years would not accomplish what she has accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's an encouraging word where they say Jesus Christ died at the age of 30, mm -hmm. 33 I think. 33. Yeah. But he had served his full donation, which is to give salvation. Mm -hmm. And so I think with Joyce, we just have to encourage ourselves and the family that she's, she has served her full donation. Mm -hmm. She showed that a woman in Bomet mm -hmm. could actually bring that change that uh, Ben B sang about. Right. And, uh, that has been amazing, but it also reminds us of our mortality. Right. And, uh, and reminds us that we must make every day count. Mm. And usually I said, how could we lose our finest? But I said to myself, maybe I'm still alive because there's work I haven't done. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe I'm being given an opportunity to finish what I'm supposed to be doing. But when you finish your work, I guess your time will it come. I believe that as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Honorable Wanga, earlier on we, you talked to, talked to us about how um, the sort of leadership that Dr. Joyce Labosa showed even after that incident that you had with her. How different can women be when it comes to um, portraying leadership in politics? Can we be different from men when it comes to leadership? Um, do we, or do we have to go with the stereotype of cut fights amongst women? <coughs> how different should it be? Well, I think yeah, Joyce also with men. Yeah. I think Joyce um, <laughs> truly exemplified you know grace in women's leadership and mm -hmm. just uh, class and 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 when it came to, when it came to women's leadership i think she didn't it didn't matter to her what the politics was i think uh, she was always on the front line when it came to defending women's leadership um we respect her because she crushed the glass ceiling you know when it came to the issue of, of even deputy speakership, she, you know, she held that position as the first woman to actually hold it. And when she went to become governor, as women in parliament, we again lost mm -hmm. the position of, 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 of deputy uh, speakership. So I, I think Joyce always came to the front line. In fact, the last meeting we had with her was a meeting at Intercontinental where we had all women leaders coming together to speak about um, what is our place in this whole BBI uh, process? Mm -hmm. and, and, and Joyce came and she spoke very strongly and very powerfully. It was an embrace uh, meeting. She came and she spoke very powerfully <coughs> about what she thought about women's leadership and why we were still hanging on, on two thirds and that we should go for 50-50 and that women should prepare and that we should go out there strongly. It didn't matter to her that who, you know, who organized this meeting. No, no, she, she came and she was sitting side, side by side with Mama Ida on this side, Governor Charity Ngilu, Governor mm -hmm. Anwai Guru, the mm -hmm. CS for um, gender, Professor Kobia, and that showed you who Joyce was. 
when it came to women and leadership, mm -hmm. she didn't mind um, the politics of it. And, and, and I think she has left us a great mm. challenge. All right. Honorable. Uh, just, just before you go on, we'll come back to that on uh, the role of women in politics. But um, the specific journey of cancer that um, uh, Dr. Laboso had, I don't know whether you have any details, because now we see, we read from the papers that she had a, a battle for 28 years, and that's not a mean time to have uh, conquered that, but, but eventually she succumbs. So how was it like, in, uh, even as you reflect on what just happened last week about Keno Koth? Yeah, first of all, let me, let me also use this opportunity to give our deepest condolences to the family of Ken Okoth uh, and the people of Kibra. Ken was truly um, a brilliant young man who exemplified leadership in its true sense. Ken was, Ken was, um, Ken was so straight, you never had to second guess him. Mm -hmm. If you know, and, and there were things around human rights and around equity and around you know that he never compromised on. So if Ken told you yes, it was yes. Mm -hmm. And if Ken didn't want it, he'd just tell you no, my friend. Even if the party was taking that direction, it mm -hmm. didn't matter to him. He would just if you had a bill, if you had a motion, you had to convince him on its merits. The idea of telling him that Ken, you know, the party is supporting, you know, let's just go. Mm -mm. You'd say, oh, okay, so now what, why are we supporting this? And, and if you convince him on the merits, it didn't matter even if you were from the Jubilee side, he would just support you. And he would stand on the floor and he would, you know, speak in support. And so Ken was a brilliant, we've lost a brilliant young man there. Mm -hmm. and, and just speaking quickly on, on the journey, I mean, Joyce was one of, of those we looked up to. I looked up to her again in a different sense because she had... You, you know, she had had cancer before, you know, like 27 years ago, and she had healed out of it. And so somebody like myself who was diagnosed with cancer in 2014, you know, and, 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 and went into remission as well, we were very encouraged that, um, uh, you know, there is, there's always, you know, you can make it through. Mm -hmm. So I, I, What cancer was it for her initially? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it was colon cancer. Yeah, 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 without so, speaking too much. Mm -hmm. Let me rope in Honorable Ziambo. 27 years, and she fought this so bravely. But even as we are remembering the likes of Ken O'Connor, Dr. Joyce Laboso, um, Bob Colimo, and so forth, a lot of Kenyans, normal Kenyans would be like, if these guys who have money, who have connections, can't say it's beating them, what about the common Kenyan? What about that Kenyan in Kibra? Or that Kenyan in Bomet who is also fighting cancer today as well, that we do not know of. Okay, let me put it this way. What we are witnessing, to me, it uh, speaks about the universality of men, that we are all human beings and we can be affected by anything and everything. It is very sad, once again, Paul, to the family of Okoth and the nation of Kenya, and Kebra, and ODM party at large. Mm -hmm. uh, the case of cancer, I think uh, it's becoming a sinister thing among us. And it is high time we realized that it doesn't matter whether you have the money, you have the resources, you have the hospital or what, there is a need to do something systematic and consistent about it. And at that point, what I would like to urge is that uh, precautions may be better. I think reading from uh, testimonies of those who have gone through cancer, out there, the doctors, uh, we, there, there, there are some triggers which are seemingly common, like the, the lifestyle, the foods that we eat. Many researchers are pointing to the kind of foods that we eat. And I think I want to take Kenyans back mm -hmm. to the pre-colonial days when we used to eat the raw vegetables from the bush and the fruits and all those kind of things. We need to go back to the nature. Mother Nature has got some very good things. You know, at some stage, we were made to think and believe that if you are uh, educated like uh, Dr. Laboso, Dr. Pamela, and all this, then you need to eat the fast foods and you know these, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But in a way, these things have made our bodies uh, prone and more exposed to some of the dangers like the cancer. Now, my appeal would be Kenyans, we have some very good foods, like the kal, you know, 
wimbi and the millets and the vegetables and the, 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 the natural foods like the fish that we get from the rivers and the lakes. All these are very good foods that we need to eat. And therefore, even the call to have people screened, like I would encourage women, it is in order that you go for a checkup. When we talk of screening, sometimes it is misunderstood mm -hmm. that we are only looking for those who are already affected. Mm -hmm. right. It is also good to know that you are not yet affected and, 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 and do it such that, uh, of course, we can't prevent death. Somehow death comes Physical. at different times or at old age or whenever. Mm -hmm. But it is good to live healthy. I think this is the, what I'm learning from all this. Okay. And, and, and even people who are poor out there, we should not despair. The people who are rich, we should not think we are any better. Mm -hmm. So we are all the same. And that's why when we are discussing issues like leaders, sometimes it is important that we be, be not subjective. I mean subjective. Mm -hmm. We be objective. We deal with the issue. If it is matter, a matter of universal health care, mm -hmm. just as me, the MP of Migori County, needs good health care, so is the... The, the woman in the local village down there and the children and everybody else. So we better be serious in Kenya that when we say we are giving first class health care to all of us, let the, the kind of care that we get in Nairobi Hospital okay. be found in Ombo Hospital in Migori. Mm -hmm. I think this is what we are saying about the issues of health and important issues that are affecting the people of our country. Okay. Be yes. be before we listen to you, Sylvia, I, I mean, before we listen to what uh, the governor uh, campaigned on in terms of her manifesto, when we speak about this, the cancer conversation that we always have, and there's that call that we need to declare it a national disaster, there's need to devote more resources to a diagnosis and treatment of cancer. Have we made any progress, especially at the county level? And I ask you this as a senator whose role is to oversight the counties. Um, oh, I can say a lot when it comes to issues of county and whether funds have been allocated adequately or whether whatever little funds are there have been put to good use. Mm -hmm. But first, let me also yeah. say that um, mm -hmm. to the family of Ken Okoth, mm -hmm. uh, uh, deep condolences and of course fare thee well Honorable Ken Okoth and the people of Kibra again it is said that we bury ourselves when we are alive mm -hmm. so it's easy to see somebody's legacy by how he celebrated at death and Honorable, um, Honorable Ken Okoth as well as uh, Dr. Leboso you can see you can see the impact they made to their people, mm -hmm. which is a sign of their good leadership as already has been testified here. Right. And we have to celebrate that. Um, last night, there's, uh, somebody sent me the Kenya National Cancer Control Strategy, mm -hmm. 2017 to 2022. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, there's a beautiful document on how this country, both at national and county level, can fight cancer. Mm -hmm. Beautiful document. Will it just remain that? A beautiful that is the question. Document? We are good at drawing up documents. By mm -hmm. the way, Kenyans, we are very good at drawing up documents. Mm -hmm. But the question is the implementation. Where is the implementation? This is a 2017 document. And from my reading of it and what is supposed to happen at national and county level, I don't have any example I can give you and say, uh, this is actually happening as per this strategy. Okay. I don't have mm -hmm. that example. What would you like to see the government doing in order to make cancer treatment in Kenya bearable? It, the document must be implemented. And because it, health is a devolved function, we have to see funds going down to the county. We have to see these policy, beautiful as it is, implemented at the county level because that's where everything starts. Everything starts at the county. What is happening at national government is policy, evaluation, monitoring. Mm -hmm. So we have to see these cogs turning. Kenyans are suffering. I think every Kenyan has a story to tell. Mm. And will we be able to achieve universal health care, which is one of President Uhuru Kenyatta's big questions? And this agenda. is, again, this is in line with the universal health care, exactly. isn't it? So why, is, why haven't we started seeing the implementation of something like this? Mm. How many Kenyans have to die mm -hmm. so that now the government can wake up? Again, we are going to see those knee-jerk reactions, and we know what happens with those. All, all, yeah. all right. A, a few weeks ago, we spoke to the cabinet secretary in charge of health, Cecily Karyuk, and she spoke about that, the strategy to defeat cancer, talking about the cancer centers that are supposed to be constructed. I believe uh, one of them are the coast, and uh, there is a KC, if I'm not mistaken. But yes, the strategy is 2017-2022. We're already in 2019. Uh, do you think there is commitment to achieving exactly what this is supposed to be achieving? Well, I think we have to make the commitment. I think uh, we, can no longer, we can no longer sit back and watch the issue of cancer. Um, 
it's and 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 we're very sorry that we've lost you know our leaders um, but the many, many Kenyans in the villages, this weekend alone, I attended two, three funerals, all of them mm -hmm. uh, died from cancer. Mm -hmm. So there's a very, very big problem that we are facing. And what I have introduced in Parliament is a bill. I introduced it in the last Parliament. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to conclude it because um, I, it, it died in, at the stage of second reading because of the time. Mm -hmm. I'm a parliament lapse, but I have reintroduced it in this parliament, uh, the Cancer Prevention and Control Act Amendment uh, Bill. Uh, what, we are, what I'm trying to do in that bill, because one of the things I've seen from my own experiences is in terms of the training of our human resource. Uh, we don't have enough oncologists, but not just oncologists. We don't have oncology nurses, oncology radiologists, or you know, oncology pharmacists. So, such that the few doctors that we have have to deal with everything you know when you when you when you're at the hospital um, the nurses come to try and just prepare you for the doctor but they can't do it they have to wait for the doctor to actually come and do the very uh, basics because they, we do not have enough training but then there's the more important bit which is introducing cancer as part of primary health care and mm -hmm. that is one of the things that my bill is doing mm -hmm. which is once you train clinical officers you train nurses because they're the ones who sit in the dispensaries for example mm -hmm. so when i go to the dispensary and say uh, look i'm having really stomach problems you know they don't just give me flagell mm -hmm. and send me home mm -hmm. because one of the things Ken told me after he was diagnosed he came and told me you know Gladys yeah, I've, you know I've had this problem for a long time but then they keep telling me I have ulcers you know mm -hmm. uh, and then now finally they've told me I have so but for a long time he was just being treated for for ulcers, ulcers. you know so we need to have at the very very basic level mm -hmm. people who are aware uh, clinical officers nurses because at the dispensary you don't find doctors. you don't find doctors mm -hmm. you know they'll, they'll start coming at level four level five mm -hmm. but at that level when you go your clinical officer your nurse should be able to tell you okay if you have the stomach problems let you this. get a screening for this mm -hmm. screening for cervical cancer for example pap smear should be mandatory so that when you go part of the primary health care you receive is a pap smear mm -hmm you know, for, for the cervix and then, you know, breast cancer tests. If you say some things about uh, holding urine and so on, they should be able to test you for prostate so that we discover early because the only thing that will help us also, apart from treatment, right. is of course early diagnosis mm -hmm. and correct diagnosis. So mm -hmm. the bill that I have introduced, which I will move to the end, is to deal with training of our healthcare workers, but also introduction of cancer as part of primary healthcare. And we need to fund the National Cancer Institute because if you look at the Cancer Bill, the Cancer Act, mm -hmm. the Control and Prevention Act, a lot of work is given to the National Cancer Institute, mm -hmm. the one where Bob Colimo was put on the board. Right. But then it is not funded. So mm -hmm. I think it's a failure on the executive but also on our part as parliament because we have to allocate money we cannot say the national cancer institute shall do research shall keep a database shall do a b shall do training but mm. then they have no money it's, it's, to it's do not anything. so we take it that you bring it back to the floor no yeah. the bill is already it's on the, the floor, floor it's already yeah. it's already gone through pre-publication scrutiny i was at before the health committee it's now going to come to the floor so All we're right. going to hasten it mm -hmm. so that it comes to the floor and with several other bills, we have already, we've also introduced the National Referral Facilities uh, Bill mm -hmm. together with Honorable Sabina Shege, we are co-sponsoring, okay. so that we also deal with funding of our facilities at the ground level. All right, we need to take a short break, and uh, we do that by listening to what Jess Laboso had to say in the run-up to the 2017 general election. Of course, she was indicating what she thought was crucial and um, the basic needs of her, uh, her, her um, constituents, mm -hmm. and eventually she was able to convince them we are back in a moment. Nafikiria itakuwa ni maji. Ni maji kabisa kwa sababu kila kona nikitembea kwa mama wanabeba mitungi punguza hii umaskini kutumia vile nimesema agriculture. Kwa T sector ni kitu gani tunaweza kufanya? Alafu na dairy industry ya ku, ku reduce poverty. Alafu of course maternal health mimi kama mama